we welcome John Green, Youngstown, Ohio guy, the Ohio versus Pennsylvania and Hershey. It's Father's Day weekend next year. And John, we're so delighted for you. I, I think the executive committee and the board made such a, a great decision. Uh, tell us what makes you excited about it. And again, just congratulations again. Well, thank you, Jed. Uh, you know, personally, I'm just so excited about this. Like you said, I'm from Ohio. I played my college ball in Pennsylvania. So what a nice mix and, and a nice way to stay involved with football. Uh, I've been raising money for scholarships uh, um, for Penn State for the last uh, seven years and now I get a chance to do that uh, for uh, high school students coming out of Ohio and coming out of Pennsylvania so you know I'm just thrilled to be a part of it I've um, got a great organization as you saw a lot of rich tradition with uh, the, the the players that have played uh, Mickey Minnick and, and the, the, the former organization has put a lot of love into this thing so I'm just looking forward to, to, to taking taking the reins and taking it to a new new height well, no doubt. Ohio and Pennsylvania restarted their rivalry back in 1993. And, uh, you know, with Penn State and Ohio State now, that rivalry started again in 1993. So there's just a little bit of an undercurrent there that kind of helps the Big 33. It kind of creates a whole Ohio versus Pennsylvania rivalry. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like playing against a, playing, playing a pickup game with your brother. You know, you know, you, you, you both want to win and you want to win, win vigorously. And so there's a lot of good competition there. Um, you know, like I said, I'm from both. And, and uh, you know, growing up in Ohio, I always thought that this was the area where football, high school football was born. It's a similar uh, similar relationship in, in Ohio. On Friday nights are for high school football. In Pennsylvania, it's the same way. Friday nights are for high school football. And, uh, and so there's a lot of support from both, and, and it's just a good relationship. Well, uh, John played on the uh, 1986 uh, national championship team, was a captain in uh, 1988. We had you uh, on uh, radio this morning, and you told a very compelling story about uh, just how to persevere. The Big 33, not everybody's going to go to the NFL. Yes, it has this unbelievable legacy, but John, Joe Paterno actually told you once that you weren't good enough to play here. Kind of give that story a little bit, because you talk about perseverance, man. Our guy John Green right here had to overcome it. He got the big-time challenge from the legendary coach here and got through it. Well, I, you know, I had a problem making our conditioning test uh, every summer in the 880s, and Kenny, you'll remember those well. Uh, I was one of those What are they? Give just... the terms of this. This is not easy, everybody. Believe I would just me. tighten up. It, basically, we had a, uh, for our group of running backs and receivers, we had two minutes and 25 seconds to run a, a half mile. Uh, then we had two and a half minutes rest and we had to run the second one under two and a half minutes. So basically it's under a five minute mile. Uh, and uh, I would train three times a day. I'd train all summer, come back 15, 10 to 15 pounds underweight. And, uh, and, and the coaches knew I had been working and knew that I was in shape, but I just physically was unable to do it. And, uh, and those guys, and they still make fun of me. They still get to smiling when they think about those days. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I just could not make it. And, and after uh, my, my junior year, the actual national championship year, coach called me in and said, hey, John, Seems like you can't do some of the basic things it takes to play here, and maybe you want to think about going someplace else where you'd be happy. But, you know, fortunately, growing up, I had a lot of people tell me to never quit on your dreams, uh, and I listened to that. And I had a lot of good uh, people tell me that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, to believe in yourself. And I did believe in myself, and I had, I was over halfway to graduation. I was going into my junior year. I had a lot of good friends. I had a good, a lot of good you know, friends that I called brother that were on the team, and uh, I couldn't see myself quitting and leaving and going anywhere else. And, and uh, so, you know, I guess my perseverance was being able to look at the great legendary football coach and tell him in his eyes that uh, that he was wrong and that uh, I could play here and that I was going to play here and unfortunately it worked out. One thing John you shouldn't be embarrassed about it because it happens every year Courtney Brown was the first player picked in the draft a few years back uh -huh. and he had the same problem. Okay okay so, so it's so all yes. greatness. <laughs> so it doesn't I know what, uh, people laugh but let me tell you, it, it doesn't correlate. You know, you're not a mild or distant runner, and I know you worked harder than anybody. It wasn't for lack of effort. And I've never all been of, running 880 on a football field. Exactly. <laughs> and all of our bodies are a little different. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Something we all a little different. So you can't put one criteria. You got to look at the whole man. The coach just wanted to challenge you a little bit more, and you became a captain. And look, that's yeah. a champion. Well, I think too. That's uh, you know, it's the heart that makes it great. And I think you know, as you go to the Big 33 right now, you take kind of those experiences a little bit. But it is only a week, but I think it's a great opportunity for a young man to challenge himself. Isn't it about challenges oh, anymore? And I absolutely. think that's where you're looking to do with this, right? Absolutely. And these, these young people get a chance to challenge themselves on a bigger stage than their high school stage um, before going off to their colleges. They get a chance to learn about co community because the Big 33, uh, there's a lot of great volunteers within the, co uh, the community, the host families, uh, the people that help pull this thing together, the, the game day operations. I mean, these are volunteers that, that are pulling this thing together. So these players get a chance to be around a lot 
of great people. They also get a chance through the Buddy Program to be around some special needs children and really make a special moment in those in those children in their lives during the week and, and allowing them to have a positive experience with football, with college or high school football players and have a positive experience and add to the way they view college football as they watch in Saturdays coming in the fall. You know, Kenny was fortunate enough. He got the opportunity to play in the National Football League. But, you know, it's all about the education. It's not about the next five years. It's about the next 50. And I think that we really need to get a little more grounded here. This game has gotten so big, Jed, that sometimes we forget what you're doing, especially with the Big 33, how you make these guys young men, what you do for them. And there's so many needs. And a lot of times you guys are behind the scenes and people never get a chance to see what you really do. It's so special. I hope that game continues. Because I know a lot of a lot of take it's not easy. You got to go out and raise money and do a lot of things to keep it going. Well, we're looking to keep it going. Uh, we expect to keep it going. Uh, we're going to make it better. Uh, we're going to tweak it, uh, but we're going to raise more money for the uh, scholarship funds as well, and we're going we're to bring more attention to the game. I mean, there's been a lot of national coverage uh, of the game. Uh, NFL Network televised it last year. We garnered a 1.3 uh, ranking. Uh, the closest high school football game to that was the Bayou Classic between Louisiana and Texas, and they were a .9. So there's a lot of attention. There's a lot of love for this game, and uh, we just want to make it better and keep it going. Yeah, I believe there's 15 NFL Hall of Famers who have uh, Big 33 as far as uh, an alumni uh, address here. It's a chance, too, I think, that's been fun for fans. Now, it's got to be played in June, unlike where it was, and it's late July because with the 85-man limit, college coaches want their guys on campus in the summer plan. So it, it, it's like all things, you just make adjustments. That, yeah, you're right. That's a, It's a challenge. And in everything you have, you're going to have a challenge, and you're just going to have to adjust to it. We've adjusted the date. We've moved it to June. It's now at an optimal time, and that's what we're going to work with. And if some other challenge comes into play, we're going to adjust to that, and we're going to get it done. Also, John is from Youngstown, Ohio, came here to Penn State, and fully aware what that tradition was growing up in the Buckeye State, weren't you? Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but uh, but I, bought, I bought into the system here. I bought into what we talked about. I talked about academics and we talked about winning national champions, championships and, and uh, I bought into it and I guess we had another uh, 110 guys that bought into it as well and, uh, and we were fortunately able to, to accomplish it while I was here. Also, I think the key is that Jim Tressel, the head coach at Ohio State, and Joe Paterno, of course, longtime supporters of the Big 33. Congratulations to you. I don't think they could have made a better choice. You're well, going to have a marvelous experience with that. We look forward to working with you. And, John, just uh, all the best very thank, much. Thank you, Jed. Thanks, Kenny. I appreciate oh. it. It was good talking with you guys.